I think that's pretty. I'm pretty sure that's Raven. Earth Shaker. Weaver. Man, what's happening? TNC's turn to. I mean, I'm all for it. I'm I'm all for it. But what's happening? Bench first pick. Earthshaker first pick? Nothing's wrong with Earthshaker. I mean, I, I love Earthshaker. It's 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 just that you never see it. Radiant team ban. All right, let's not go that far. Let's just let's just be happy with the Earth. Ten seconds remaining. Well, five seconds <clears throat> remaining. The, the thing about Earthshaker is that, yes, he is a very, very strong hero once you TNC your levels in Aftershock maxed out and you have a Blink Dagger. I think he's actually like one of the best disabling heroes. The problem with him is that it takes way too long to actually start it. Like, he actually needs space. He needs the levels. And until he gets those levels, he's a rather weak uh, support or an offlane. I think they, some people have ran him as an offlaner before. He's probably one of the worst offlaners just because if he's unable to get anything out of the lane, he's just stuck. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Yeah, and I'm just gonna be curious as to how they how they get this uh, Earthshaker the levels and farm that he needs. TNC's turn to ban. It's definitely possible, but it's not exactly easy. And it, it definitely takes a lot more than just a block to remaining. kill off a, a hero. Like, you need a block. Blocking is obviously very good, but after remaining. the block happens, then, then what, right? <clears throat> you need some Reserve strong right-clicking or nuking. Weaver, definitely not bad for that. I just assume Earthshaker is going to be played as support with a Weaver, or we might even see a dual lane. Just a dual lane, or 2-1-2 two, two setup. Radiant team pick. Ten well, seconds. for TNC, I'm, I'm still surprised that, uh, or not, not super surprised. Five seconds. A little surprised that they don't take the Darkseer in the first phase. Disruptor. TNC if there's anything, yeah, if there's anything reliable for TNC, it's Sam H. Darkseer. Oh yeah, for sure. I'm having uh, memories of great TNC run at TI, back of his Radiant team void. His, his void is insane in the TI. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. TNC's turn to pick. I'm really hoping that Warriors Gaming just take this into a very, very unpredictable setup. 
Ten seconds to the, remaining. To the point where we, we just have no idea what it could possibly be. Five seconds I remaining. Well, we've seen a safe lane timber saw, we've seen an off lane, we've seen a mid nothing's gonna surprise us with that. Alright, jungle timber saw will surprise me. Mid Earthshaker. Mid Earthshaker would also Also not in a good way. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. <sighs> maybe, maybe, or maybe they figured out a new way to, to ban. pull with the block. You think there's any possibility for that? If they just stop moving, yeah. What? Ten seconds remaining. What if you could block wave, but still reach the camp so that you damage the camp and they walk over? TNC's turn to pick. Like, like you, you know, you stand in the lane and you fissure block the creep wave, but also hit a camp at the end of the fissure. Ten seconds remaining. And then, and then it aggroes the creeps, and then they run over, and then... Five seconds remaining. No, they, they will run Reserve after you. Time. Turn. I actually think it's possible to make this poll happen at, you know, that bottom tier 2 poll? actually stack that camp and pull that way. Uh, well, I'm talking about pulling the creeps, actually. Remaining. I'm not sure of that. Yeah, the whole creep. Five seconds remaining. Well, anyway, this is... This is just some random Reserve guessing. Time. Yes, I would be. Actually, that's I actually I I really like Earthshaker. I'm glad to see him. Pick. You know, you never get to see Earthshaker, and Earthshaker is one of those heroes that uh really <clears throat> could make the uh, exciting plays happen. Sniper! Alright, we haven't seen a Sniper OD matchup in quite a while, but it's the tried and true from the last patch, even. I, I think here be standard. All right. I was curious as to why it was oh so quickly. This is actually Afu playing it. Interesting. He's almost always on the disruptor, but he's also not starting with any extra clarity. In fact, I think he just bought most of the sentries and observers, maybe even the courier, and that is gonna free it up second support disruptor to start with boots first. Meanwhile, Tim's is already expecting some sort of pull happening. He has dropped a very deep sentry to prevent this pull from uh, ever materializing. Maybe he's also, maybe he's seen this in Scrim or something. Maybe I'm, I'm tell. I, I honestly believe that first pick Earthshaker in this patch means you've got some kind of trick going on. Yeah, some sort of degenerate <clears throat> strategy, right? Afu is going to get a sentry back, both sentry back. So we're going to yep. see some D-Ward action. All right, it, I hope he gets his D-Ward off because I really want to see what this is all about. I'm telling you. Don't, mix, don't miss it, Afu. Okay, I got it. Got him. What does this mean? What does you it mean? I don't know. 
I'm ready. I'm, tell I'm telling you. This is what a first pick Earthshaker uh, usually leads to. Kind of, kind of tricky play. All right, he's gonna start things off by body blocking. Good thing that Tim's did not rotate in on his er Ogre Magi to uh, block the camp, body block it. And Afu is. Huh? We're gonna have to wait and see. Uh, Nana on the sniper on the mid lane, most likely gonna do okay here against the the OD, especially if he starts off with such a good block. I'm just watching Afu. I need to see this. Is he going to do? Aha! So, see, so he blocks the wave, and he okay. walks over and pulls the creep wave over. Or this pull connect. Oh, look! Wait, 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 wait! wait. They, they, they walk. They walk through. I thought they okay. fixed that. Wait, can can you? Do is, the, is it because of the ancients? angling? Can you do ancients now? Because Cloud Nine was the team that used to do this a lot, and then Ice Rock said no. I don't know how it worked. I would have imagined it would stop them too, but uh, maybe it's the the angle. All right, Ben's gonna give up first blood up on top lane. This is a game changer. I need to go back and try out all these new spots. I thought it was just like fixed. Multi. It's always a reason. All right, man. And I guess uh, TNC have definitely played against this before, right? Because they definitely they immediately went to go block the camp. I don't even know if they would play it, right? But because. I would imagine that if you're against Warriors Gaming and you see a first pick Earthshaker, there's got to be ideas coming into your mind, right? Because how often do you see Earthshaker okay. get first? So <clears throat> you're saying they just smart. They understand it's happening. Yes. All right, this Courier. Oh, Courier being micro. It's fine. Oh, Yo, you know what this... Have you seen that uh, Pixar movie? Inside out. Wait, wait, wait. Tim's. It's fine. He's gonna walk the other way. Wait, 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 wait. Body block. Shrapnel's gonna come through, but he's an ogre magi. Oh, he's, actually, he's out of shrapnel. S shots. Doing some work. Right clicks are coming through. Oh my god, it's actually pretty close. It actually would have been a first, or not a first blood uh, kill if he had more shrapnel. He's actually maxing shrapnel. I'm be I'm getting hyped for this. Getting hyped for what? This is the next pull. The next incoming pull. Oh, he's out of mana, right? He's, he's clearing right up. Oh, there's just no creep uh, or no camp. Yep. I think if, if he manages to pull the entire wave, then you can easily do both camp. Right. Now, a lot of you guys might be saying, you know, camp Pudge already do this. The fish is going to come on the other side, Ben. He's going to hook to the right and will still run away. I don't think they're going to be able to force a kill, although TNC Tims does have Fire Blast. It, it is going to hit, but he's gone on more spin. pretty good distance, and now he's going to go to the other side. Okay, he's going to be fine. Radiance Meanwhile, on the other side of the map, X Nova forces a kill with Ajit. Very nicely done. All right. Who misses the pull, unfortunately. He gets one range creep. I don't know, man. These pulls are fairly costly. Like 120 mana a pop is not free. Where you at, Ben? Time to shrine up. Ooh, team shower, let's go. Yes, we be quick. Attack. Not gonna make it in time for this wave. Uh, he, he could, he could do the next wave. It's fine. Lane. Backline. All he has is a stun though, he doesn't even have ignite. The Rass is not going to do great here. Yeah, he mostly got the ignite, or sorry, the stun to force the first blood up top. Ignite obviously not very helpful against Timbersaw, whereas the stun could get him while he was chaining. Yes. Oh, who's not gonna make this one there? I think he needs to make these pulls happen because, like I mentioned, Earthshaker are very, very level and gold dependent. Yep. He needs to be able to get these uh, golds because Snowball is the one who's taking the bottom farm. I mean, he's technically making sure that people don't die here. Wait, what happened to the group wave? Why did he fissure so early? Just well, we are up here now too. All right, he spins away and. I mean, the one thing that he's definitely doing is making sure that Ben is not dying, so that's always good. 
Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Ben is actually going on the aggressive. I mean, he's underneath his tower. <clears throat> Alright, I'm gonna watch him again. Here we go. Fissure at 508, 509. Okay. This this one should be good. Yeah, there you go. So learning, learning while you're doing. Yeah, 508 or 509. It's the Fissure time. All right, and he's gonna. Let's see how much of this wave he gets. He should get both camps, I think. Well, he has to go pull now if he wants both. Hmm, think it might be a little bit off. All right, just kidding. Sorry, I ever doubted you. Nice. This is actually super legit, but you you absolutely cannot fail it uh, first time around. I think it would be incredibly oh. effective if you managed to clear, clear the wave at at uh what for three minutes and then before five minutes it'll give you like a decent amount yeah and this is essentially playing the pudge right but obviously pudge is predicated <clears throat> on the fact that you hit early game hooks to make that hero effective whereas like you said earlier afu all he wants is you know a couple points of experience some gold and you'll be fine and he's also simultaneously protecting top and mid speaking of mid nana needs a little bit of protection right now tims is going to rotate in there's going to be a terror fissure coming through that's going to be a two-man oh, stun but stun. they surround him from all sides here comes the teleport rio is going to be trapped in there thanks to the fissure they glimpse one back in as well they get one they will get two thanks to the fissure and now Tims, or sorry afu out of mana to do anything else they did get the sniper but i think that's not too bad for wg here yeah, definitely. At least it's on both of the supports that really desperately need the levels and farm. Yeah. I think they're gonna try to set up another kill on Cuckoo. Kinetic fail fissure? I mean, that's the wombo combo, right? There's an astro for himself, he wants it, and the right clicks are coming through. Assassinate, is it gonna get dodged? No. Right clicks is gonna get him good, and we've seen the power of Earthshaker, especially during Nightfall. You could fissure well beyond night vision. And get him from fog. This is a very impressive combo, like you said. I would have never imagined the fissure kinetic field to be so effective, actually. Yeah. I mean, something you said earlier was like fissure and then what, right? Yeah. Apparently, the, yeah. the negative field is the, the and then what. And, 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 and uh, like you said, the Dyer's sniper shrapnel is going to be very effective. Fissure. Yeah. Oh, Benz is not having a good time up top. I was meant to have this. Next Nova, gonna get found here. Sam H, Burrow Strike coming in as well with the cost of finality being applied. Yeah, he's definitely dead. Of course, the Sam H offlane uh, school of thought here. Getting the bottle, always, and checking the rings. Oh, because you're not gonna connect on Rior. So far, not a bad start from Warriors Gaming. I still think Wafu needs to focus a little more on his farm. <clears throat> it is on Sam H, but there is a mid at uh, Raindrop. Wait, wait, assassinate? That's a kill, right? Yeah, he's dead. Oh, Astro? Ooh, that was that was a little close. Not dead. Not Very dead. alive. I think How the would reason I ever that... The... Yeah, I think the reason he never uh, went for the assassinate to begin with is it's just because, because of... of that. Yeah. Like, he knew he had to get it from... I thought he group. would have tried it a little earlier, because Cuckoo was... Further, further away. No, he, he'll burrow strike towards the OD, and OD will meet him halfway oh, with the top. Astro. Is this Fissure gonna work? I think it might. Done. It's just gonna come through. Ooh. And then now on the right side, Afu's gonna be dead here. You can see that Ventral Spirit saving the magic missile. He wants Ben for the next kill, but might just miss out the kill on Afu as a result. Wait. Okay, Burrow Strike's gonna get the kill. And now on the back line, gonna chain to the left side. Rior holding down on that magic missile. Chains up to the high ground, and Ben will be fine. This is super action back early on. Yeah, both sides. Actually, it's really mostly a TNC making a lot of the moves, but 
Warrior's gaming, always in the right spot to counter gank. Oh god, the courier not being micro, Nana. Gonna fire back with an assassinate. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Go! It seems like Go. the uh, early action is benefiting WG. Both their cores are farming extremely well. The Weaver in particular, winning his lane superbly, and it's now up about eight to nine hundred gold over the Juggernaut. More important to note is the support. Oh, not both of them, but uh, at the center. Yeah, at the center. That's it. Sniper has ported in, but not much you could do here. You know, I wonder if this is one of the few games that the sniper will take the shrapnel DPS level 15 instead of the 200 health. I. I'm gonna go ahead and say no. Okay. While it does sound appealing, I think his survivability is most necessary uh, over everything else. <clears throat> uh, Warriors Gaming. Always gotta have that uh, one time team house disconnect <laughs> per series. It's okay. At least not like. Uh... Oh, who was that team that we waited for like 15 to 20 minutes? And then apparently Mineski's um, fossils were used. It was whoever they played yesterday. Yeah, I guess I could look it up. Alright, I'll help you look it up. Is it RQ? They played RQ yesterday, was it RQ? Well, uh, Earthshaker has Arcane Boots, but still only just level 5. You should give him the Tome. I think Earthshaker becomes, like, really a different hero when he has Blink Dagger and level 4 Aftershock. Paint stun people for a while. <clears throat> Would you even consider, like, skipping Fissure to level up Aftershock, or is that just too crazy? Oh, yeah. I, I actually do that sometimes. It just depends on the situation you're in. Like, if okay. you're playing a hard support Earthshaker, I think having the max Fissure is by far the uh, most effective. Mm -hmm. But if you're doing decently in lane, or if you're playing a core Earthshaker, i much rather have more levels of Aftershock before everything else. I guess one way to, to do it is, you look at your farm and you can see as you're approaching to that Blink Dagger Gold, instead of taking the Fissure, you might just uh, take up Aftershock. Although, yeah, pretty much. I think give, given the current scenario, he's probably not going to have that luxury. He's probably going to just go for the standard build. That is definitely how... At least, that's how I would look at it. I wonder if Ben is going to go for the hood build here. He's having a lot of trouble just surviving these ganks. Uh, I think it's actually pretty decent here. There's not. It's just pretty much the Juggernaut who out most of the physical damage, and that's mostly with Omni Slash too. So I think most of it's just going to be Dyer's damage from the. Yep. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Yep. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Uh, one of the main reasons why OD was a pretty good pick here. It just deals with the Timber Saw very well. Mhm. Mm I'm just gonna go straight for the Elstrom. It's normally when I see this build from snipers, they always go for Dragonlance. Add their stats a bit, get a little more tanky. This is gonna be a paper build for the most part. Yes. Yeah, I guess he's showing a lot of confidence in his Earthshaker as well as the, the Disruptor. I mean, Dragonlance is also very common because you could easily upgrade it into a uh, Hurricane Pike. And, you know, coming into this game, I would say Hurricane Pike would be very important, right? Against Burrow Strike, against Swap, Magic Missile, that sort of thing. Wait, TNC, mass TP to the tier 2. They want to defend this tier 1. Yeah, they're smoked up here. Sam H does not have to blink, although he's extremely, extremely close. Ben is probably going to die here. Afu on the right side, but I think they might going to go for him. Swap's going to go on Ben. 
And now Tim's going right on Afu as this is happening. They are going to go right here on Ben. Ben going to eat the Burrow Strike. He will go down. And Tim's trying his best to keep the Shaker alongside with him as well, but... Afu's going to just walk it off. Oh, somebody's going to TP in and get Glimpse back. No! Great quick uh, spin by Raven, expecting fully the storm on top of him. Uh, but he is going to lose the tower regardless, though. That was very... Pipe. A uh, good patient play from Raven. I think I was like wondering if he was going to Omni slash the. Felt like it was necessary, but estimating very uh, precisely where the thing was. <clears throat> has been Saving onto that, holding onto that Omni slash might be important for taking a bottom tier one tower. They go for it. Yeah, Ajin is actually going to just abandon the lane altogether and now pressure's top. Shaker ports back mid. I wonder if the team is going to be grouping out with the smoke. Seems like it. They might, they might even take the sniper alongside. Sniper has finished the Maelstrom, so his damage output is not bad at the moment. Yep. I mean, the, the benefit of this build is that it just farms way faster than Dragonlands. If you're yeah, not definitely. dying. So, it is a risk of build, but looks like it's gonna pay off here as WG is the one that's doing a very excellent job of protecting the sniper. WG rotating up top. You see OD farming the trees. He's only got drums, so no, none of that defensive force staff. And the supports are rotating. He's trying to TP out. They're trying to get vision. Glimpse is gonna cancel that TP, and now Cuckoo in a lot of trouble. Fissure is gonna hit from Fog. Storm on top just to make sure that there's no uh, Astro shenanigans. And WG secures the kill. Yeah, I think they actually needed that uh, stack because if they didn't silence him, OG has that veil. He, I think it is totally reasonable that X Nova would have died to an ultimate. <laughs> Wink Burrow Strike happening on the mid lane with the epicenter backed up here at Nana. Gonna eat a magic missile on top of that. He might be tanky. He does have the fairy fire. He's swapping on it, but it will still backpack. Even with the, the non-backpack fairy fire, he was uh, still dead. And Sam he gets maximum value out of that uh that raindrop too. Oh they burned the last one. <laughs> burn both charges? Okay. Ooh. Thing to note, Afu is actually well on his way to a blink dagger. Ben, gonna get caught here again. And this is uh, the make Ben cry kind of game. He is gonna be going for the hood. It looks like he's got it, so despite dying there, he does finish this item. Bottom, Ajit comes in. Oh, he has that Desolator. Look at how much damage he does. Yeah, that's gonna give Afu a little bit of nice uh, extra gold as well. He's really close. Glimpse back on Sam H. He's gonna pour it out. I was meant to have this. Double damage. A little surprised that he glimpsed so early. Didn't see exactly how he entered that though. I think he didn't expect them to glimpsed all the way back to the bounty rune. I think he was glimpsing for the Shaker and the Weaver to catch up, but they were a little bit further away, so... Radiance middle tower is under attack. Poor Tim's... Ogre build. Great for your teammates, but... <laughs> never, never a lot of fun to play. You're just a bloodless machine. Yeah, I remember it was... What I... What I did in pub when I played this year was... Wait. And Max Bloodlust. Setting up for Ben. Ben? He's hard. What thing is up? OD is rotating over, but not gonna get him. So what you would do on all that ogre is you would Bloodlust one of your carry. And then walk across the map to Bloodlust the other carry, and then walk back. And that's your whole game. And then just repeat, rinse. Easy MMR though. <laughs> is it though? <laughs> is it's, it easy it's, MMR uh, though? It's very reliant on your teammate. Yeah. And very <clears throat> boring. You feel like the king for the first five minutes. And then you feel like a pleb for the next 45. You're like, oh my god. I mean I mean you're you're an ogre, so you definitely feel like a king. You're like the most powerful hero in the game.
Now that I think about it, what level 1 hero can actually beat an ogre? Spirit Breaker with 17% stuns? I don't even think you beat I don't know. You get incredibly lucky. If you're stunning 170% of the time, you probably beat him. I think this very kind of <coughs> slow farming game really favors WG, right? Reverse farming is extremely well. Sniper is catching up, but Sniper with this Meltrum build should be fine. And then you have these great, amazing supports in the late game for providing team fight. And of course, even with dying a couple of times, I say the Timber Cell is not so bad off either. Uh, I actually think that TNC have the better late game. Okay. I think if you just go into a passive farming war, I think this TNC lineup will do a little better. Because the OD is going to be such a, a nuisance to the WG lineup. Sure. I guess it depends what item he has, especially if he has like Blink Hex or something, then things could get I awkward. think for this kind of game, as long as he doesn't die to the Weaver and he has a Blink and BKB, it should be more than enough to dish out the damage necessary to wipe WG. Because he has yeah. that level 4 Bloodlust. <clears throat> That's definitely true. Tier 2 is being sieged up top. Looks like the uh, TNC squad is not too interested to defend it. And wow, WG is going to start Roshan. Headshot plus Swarm. Definitely very effective against the big man. They also have that later. You need to tank that down for him. Oh. Swarm got him. TNC are here. Okay, great Fisher. Blocking them back out here. Are they, do they want to finish it? Time to buy half HP here. The bash is going on to Ben. He's gonna be able to finish it. I feel like WG might want to wait for your dagger first before they try anything. You mean on the shaker? Oh, uh, sorry, yeah, on the shaker. Yeah. <clears throat> Ajit goes right back into it. Swarm's gonna get cast. A couple illusions walking in. Shame that sniper can't actually attack from outside the pit, or he could do it in a very safe distance, but. Another Fissure blocking off the entrance. Sam H has a haste rune and a blink dagger coming in from the back line. The huge wraparound. Yeah, I think at this point you would definitely wait for the Earthshaker blink, but they're gonna smoke up. Who exactly are they looking for? I'm assuming they must Watch it. Going for the tower denied, but Sam H is at the ready. He actually got it too. Instead, we're going to see a couple of TPs up top. Blink Astro, Cuckoo's going to initiate, showing off that Blink Dagger. Ex Nova, that block, not so good, but the force that to the other direction, and all of a sudden, WG in a very nice defensive spot. Epicenter, four man, three man Burrow Strike, and TNC is going to get melted here. WG gets obliterated by uh, Sam H. Ex Nova trying to come off on, on the run, but they want a bigger target. It's going to be Omni Slash going on Ajit. Ajit gets blown up as well. Oh, very Sam nice swap H. into stun as well, just to make absolutely sure that they get that Weaver kill. Yep. That was a really interesting team fight. It looked like it was one bait into another bait into another bait. <laughs> yeah, they basically threw everything for the OD, right? But but then, you know, the rest of the team came back in. <clears throat> oh, I think most of the credit goes to Sam H. Getting yep. that huge epicenter burrow strike. So that? Uh, Roshan as well. I think the game game was pretty much like 50-50 at that stage. Well, up until that exchange at least. Yeah. Now I think TMC with the slight advantage. Yeah, Shaker's Blink got further delayed as well. Looks like he's gonna finish it up right about now. He's also approaching level 10 here. I think you just take the Strength Talent, because your mana pool is pretty okay at this point. No, no, no. You, you get Aftershock. What? You, you take Aftershock at level 10. Unless you mean like, you take Aftershock oh, immediately. I see. And you're right, he does take Aftershock as 10. Aftershock's just too important. I, I think it's... It, mu it has to be prioritized uh, for your talent, unless you already maxed Aftershock before your 10. You know the number, the, the way that Aftershock scales, it, it seems like... Very little, right? Just like 0.3 second of stun and 25 extra damage. But, it does add up, especially when you're hitting everything in an AoE. Yeah, I think a better way to look at it, it's free, right? 
but you have three spells. Yep. So, I mean, you can technically look at it as point nine and everything. <clears throat> Well, Sniper definitely took the plus 20 DPS on Shrapnel. Actually farming extremely effective with it. 95 DPS to trap. Last thing for Still how pretty long? OP. For 10 seconds. 950 damage nuke. Seems good. I Wait. think Warriors Gaming want to take this team fight. They know that TNC are going to go for this push. Rafu's trying to be sneaky, but Juggernaut's getting a lot of close, and he's gonna get scouted here. Oh god, run. I was gonna say, that spot is not very safe. A lot of yep. teams definitely know about it. Whenever you have a hero like Sand King, for example, everyone always hides there. Oh, tier 2's gonna get claimed, and... Yeah, off the back of that one team fight, is taking multiple objectives. I'll take your tribute. And <clears throat> what is about like an 8,000 gold swing since that big team fight. Ajit is still farming pretty well, but this Juggernaut has really, really flew ahead. Alright, let's take a look at net worth. Yeah, pretty much that Roshan fight just won everything into TNC side. W Gaming, or WG actually had a 4,000 gold lead until then. Yep. <clears throat> Radiance top tower is under attack. Or Ben. Thousand net worth. <laughs> Buying everything. I mean, this is not a bad item inventory for two thousand net worth. Like, the drums, or having the urn is super nice for the team. Still hasn't taken Radiance his level 10 talent, and I definitely agree with it. I think, uh, I honestly wouldn't even take all the talents until level You want okay. the level 15 one. Blink Echo Slam here just for- wow! Tanking just Dyer's got wrecked. Is under attack. Okay. Worth? Super worth. Yeah? Because I, I don't think Warriors Gaming has any intention of taking a head-on team fight. Especially knowing that Raven still has his Egypt. Ooh, I really like this purchase. Afu buys up a gem straight up with that gold that he just got. So despite the other team having Aegis, they just want to wrestle map control back. I mean, they're correct. They're recognizing the fact that they're not really gonna just straight up farm their way back in the game. They need to make sure that the Dire team is not farming as efficiently by not having vision on the map and also randomly getting picked. Just like what we saw in the bottom lane. TNC are definitely ahead, but they're not ahead to the point where Warriors Gaming can't do anything about it. Right. And they have some great pickoff heroes. So by applying this pressure, like you said, definitely worthwhile. Goo. Ding. Going for that Manta Diffusal build. Oh. Crazy. I think Warriors Gaming should definitely go for a smoke now. Uh, I'm pretty sure they have timers on the Aegis. And if they know that the Aegis is gone, I think they are still in a position where they could win a team fight. I wonder what Sniper is going up. Going for next. Feels like he... I think he just finished the Mjolnir. Like... Okay. I just think he just keeps buying damage, right? Because... Hurricane Pike is enough for defense. Maybe later on he might want to consider getting a Eye of Scouting, which is quite good against the Juggernaut, but... For now... He got Shadow Blade. Okay. Both damage and helps him with uh, positioning. All right, TNC, Fine Man smoked up after popping a shrine. Roshan's no longer up. They might run right into WG. In fact, Sniper might be the first one that gets ran at. Ooh, oh, this is so bad for Nana. Do they see him? All the rest of his team is running way far ahead. 
Oh, they're gonna swap one back, and that's gonna be the uh, oh. quickest kill ever. Not even time to Sudoku. I think this kill is extra value for them because WG were smoking at the same time. Yep. <clears throat> Although Apu thinking about jumping with that epicenter. Sorry, when I said Epicenter, I meant Echo Slam. Oh, yeah, the Echo. Well, Timbersaw's back already. TMC, they back away. I mean, both teams try to smoke, but they got a Timbersaw kill, so... Pretty good stuff here for TMC. Yeah, they definitely pulled, uh... I had a... Actually, it was a much better trade for TMC, because... Essentially, you're dodging a smoke gank. Then you also got a kill in return, it was on one of the cores, and you got some damage on the tier 2 and forced everyone back to get some map control as well. Pretty big swing, that one smoke. Yep. Right now though, TNC having absolutely no vision on the map, thanks to that gem, so... Not exactly sure how they're gonna play it for the next couple of minutes of the game. Roshan is also back up fairly soon, so if WG wins the decisive victory in the near, nearby 5 minutes or so, let's say, then they could get... They could reclaim the control of the game, I think, if they get the Roche. It's gonna be a tough objective to take, though. They end up smoking again. Afu does have a gem as well. He has to be very careful not to lose it. They give WG ticket fight and they lose it along with the gem. Going to be stuck in their bait. Wow. So. Gonna be stuck with that kind of place though. Oh, we're gonna see a TP to base. Oh no, Cuckoo just uses TP for no oh, reason. They're baiting out Tim's. Tim's is very tanky though. He has Guardian Greaves. I think they recognize that WG does not want to go in. I'm just gonna swarm south. Looks trying to get some vision. Ben's in the front line. They ping out Raven, but I'm not sure if they actually even kill Raven. One stun, storm on top, but the defensive flop's gonna come through. They are gonna get a quick kill on Rior. One for zero I think TNC so can just go back in now, even without their revenge. Are you sure? Yeah. They are going back in right now. He blinks forward. Raven wants the Omni Slash, but it's going to go right onto the team. He's just tanking all of it. And now finally, he's back to Apu. Ah, just going to be fine for now. He still has the BKB going on. He's a Kuchin through. He's going to be okay. Meanwhile, it looks like the Juggernaut got Astro backed up, but he's okay. Epicenter going to the south side. It's going to be on Nana. Nana, very, very tanky, but he gets now glimpsed back into the fight. No, he's dead. Juggernaut still on the chase. Thanks to Astro by Cuckoo, Juggernaut got rid of all the focus fire on top of him and was able to come back out with Yielding Ward and everything else at the ready. I'll take your that was very lucky for Warriors Gaming. They should have lost more, but Raven was actually a little unlucky with his bounces. I, he was actually about to kill Ajit, yep. and luckily for him, it bounced over to, uh, I think it was Timbersaw. So instead of losing three, they only ended up losing two for that exchange. I guess they really are dependent on that static storm to take fights. <clears throat> and as well, soon as the they have it, Jugg Juggernaut right now is just too big of a threat for them. And I think the only real way they're going to be able to win the team fight is if they kill off Juggernaut before he Omni slashes. <clears throat> So they basically they committed everything to try to kill him, but very nice swap coming out of Rior turns that plan around, and that's why, like like I said, they were be more than willing to take a team fight even without Rior. Goo starts things off with a blink astro, blink burrow strike, the right click here from Raven. My God, that damage is so big. Ajit being forced away, and you know with the Aegis, Tim should be okay. Yeah, they're gonna just keep on pushing. Well, let's see how good that Shrapnel is. It's weakening the creep wave. The Lightning procs are going around for that forward for the slot, but Rior is going to get caught off Storm. It's going to be pretty good as well. They will definitely get the Vents for sure. I think that's all they're going to get, but good defense so far. Cuckoo's going to get assassinated. And the rest of WG now stays back in their base again. Much like the Tim Tinker high ground defense, Sniper high ground defense is also no joke. <coughs> Yeah, well, even with the R head, it's not easy to break this hunt down. Blink Echo Slam here, Chain Sun on Raven. Raven should be able to spin. In fact, he will just spin out of it. The Astro, I think he actually missed like Now Ben getting focused on the back line here. Cuckoo looking to four hit him. Now switching target oh, to Awful. Oh, the Omni! 
Okay, he's Aku alive. This is gonna get killed by the OD, and now the Juggernaut. Oh, sorry, the Sniper getting focused. He's trying to go up, but he's gonna go down to the OD. That's two to three more kills here. I don't know where the Juggernaut went, but it looks like he is fine as he just scutters away. Yeah, he's fine. That was really well played by Raven. Doing everything in his power to dodge the last hit that would have killed him. Not gonna be having the good luck this time here. Cuckoo just assassinates him. What the Sanity's Eclipse? All of a sudden, TNC's hitting the high ground. Pops a jump, blinks forward, going for X Nova. X Nova's gonna get four hit and, Oh my god, he trades his Aegis. Ultra first. kill. Give him one more for the rampage. All the buybacks, though, he might actually just die and feed the Aegis like this. Cuckoo will force that away. Nice. He still has uh, Astro. He has Glimpse back, Astro. Oh, so he's not gonna get out of this. Ping, yeah, the ping the area on top, but. Well, he does actually get one before he dies. Oh no, that was, that was his ogre going down. Oh, okay. And these team fights are getting a little bit too hard to call. Lots of stuff is happening. Well, like you said, they were doing some structural damage, but you have to remember, it's just an OD hitting buildings. He's not exactly the greatest at hitting buildings. Even after killing off so many heroes, power's only down half-life. I think without Raven, they just don't have the damage to break high ground. I still think it was absolutely fine. They took triple buybacks. Sniper, Timber, as well as uh, Disruptor, so... i say that is pretty good in my books. Illusion. You have to remember though, it was for... The Aegis and the OD. I think you're, you're willing to trade three buybacks, yeah? For an OD? Oh no, that's, that's, that's what I'm saying. Oh, I'm saying TNC is willing to make that trade. Think. A lot of it just comes down to Raven being there. So yeah. They use the um, they use the Omni Slash in that team fight just so that he would live, and it was definitely worth it. <clears throat> but Juggernaut, they I don't really think they should be. Nana is starting to get quite a bit of damage. We'll pick up the ultimate orb. No, I'm going back for an Hyperstone to finish the Mjolnir. Yeah, he had the Silver Edge queued up and he's just going to go for the Mjolnir first. Which I think is the right choice. They they do need more damage and I think they're going to be playing on their high ground for some time, I would have to imagine, given the position they're in. They keep playing on their high ground so they get the next Aegis, which may or may never happen. We'll have to see. Ajit is not exactly weak right now. He has a data. He hits incredibly hard. Sam H gonna get the everything on top of him. Sam H gonna be dead. Alright. That was again. so worth it because Sam H is the one who was carrying the gem and now WG have both of the gems. Okay, that's that's huge. That's where comebacks are, are made of. Enemy gems. <laughs> Nana's gonna get a lot more time uh, to finish this item. You see that he's not even saving for buyback because obviously he doesn't have it anymore, so why bother? And the rest of TNC is somehow somewhat lost in terms of what they could be doing. Can't really push high ground without the, uh, the Sam Age. Not much room to farm. Plane. Tim's. Oh, they're going on Nana. They dust him out. They send him up, and they need a little bit more force sheep. staff. Yeah, he's, gonna, he's straight up dead. That's honestly super greedy. WG. Are they? Okay, okay, they got him. I was gonna say, where's the Astro? Yeah, I'm. I'm I agree with you. I'm a little surprised that they confident in their ability to survive doing this kind of yeah. lane pressuring. I mean, granted, if you press F2 and look at the Radiant Vision, you understand why. They don't have any vision on the map, so... Maybe it's just a momentary lapse in judgment and did not see that 3-4 hero coming in. I mean, the thing is, like, even without vision, you should realize that if you're hitting the tower, you, there is always that potential. <clears throat> oh, no, I agree. And, and a lot of the times, you know, when you do make these kind of plays, I think they're relatively safe. But you usually see it with heroes like, for example, Sand King, when they have Blink, Four Staff, it's a lot safer to make these kind of plays. Sniper only has Shadow Blade and Hurricane Pike, not really the safest. 
Thank you. Have a whist sitting behind you. Samish really behind enemy lines here. Tier threes are going down fast. Tim's moving forward, and Samish prepping up a very very good epicenter. Although Afu also, that was Afu. Yeah, also doing the same thing here. Look at that attack speed. Are they gonna start on Raven? I'm not sure whether that's actually possible. They need to kill the Healing Ward. Blink Burrow Strike here, and where's the Echo Slam? Nice tax going on top. The BKB is gonna prevent the Side Storm from doing too much. Afu still being extremely patient with his initiation, but too little, too late in my opinion. They've lost Rax, and look at Raven's attack speed. My god. The Shaker is still stuck in those trees. What's happening? They have to wait out the Healing Ward, because no one can safely reach the Healing Ward. Not even a sniper, I guess. And by the time the healing ward ran out, they already lost Rex. Man, trying to wait out healing ward has got to be one of the worst game plans, because that thing lasts forever. I don't, better than no game plan. Healing ward is already back up. Oh, time to sit in the fountain, I guess. I mean, Afu has a smoke. Doesn't feel too confident in using it. Wait, they they oh, know here about comes. This. Oh, the TNC. Wait, they have no idea. Never mind. Bench looking for the swap though. Do they have high ground vision? Drops the war now. Swaps him back in. Nice vision though, and he got the hex off. We are just beast. Link only slash on the back line. Afu now goes to the low ground. Thanks for the beast, says Mr. OD Raven. Up on the high ground, spinning away. Nice two man burrow strike. Now it's gonna focus on Nana. Oh my God, the hammer has been dropped. Nana is gonna get killed. Ben is also on the way out here, and Kuku is just so big, so fat. X Nova's also gonna get bursted down. And Ben, the last one surviving, will hide in the trees as his throne falls down. We were a little bit hyped for the Shaker, but ultimately it was the OD, as well as the Sanking, the tried and true heroes, able to 